Welcome everyone. So today we are going to talk about a very special topic. It's sulfur mustard. And this is a warfare agent, a chemical agent, which is used in um, World War I and some of the Middle East conflicts too. And we are going to learn about that. And you might be thinking, what does that have to do with the nursing? It is a lot of information for us nurses too, especially when you are in nursing schools or you are going for some exams or your RN exams, it's going to be a very important subject. So let's dive into it and learn all about it. So you'll be all ready. Um, this is a concept map for it, and we are going to go through each and everything um, about sulfur mustard. First of all, what is it? It's a chemical warfare agent, and it comes under the group of vesicant. And vesicants are the ones which actually make a lot of blistering. And this is a very powerful chemical, and it can even alter the DNA, and it can damage the bone marrow too. So it causes blistering of the skin and mucous membrane on contact. And it is a, it is also known in some other names called mustard gas, mustard agent, and it can be clear yellow or it can be brown and it can be um, in gas form, it can be in liquid form, and it could be in some food items. And when people take it, they might get that, you know, chemically affected with that. So um, it's very difficult to identify, but it's been there, then we will, you know, we'll have to conduct certain measures to prevent it from spreading and also uh, making sure that we are getting rid of any contact with the sulfur mustard as early as possible. And um, the other thing is it smells like garlic. Uh, it sometimes smells like onion or mustard, like the name suggests, or it may be odorless, which means there is no odor. So um, it's, it's very difficult to identify. But if you have been hearing about this has been used or maybe in the community or maybe you're working as a community nurse or you're spreading some uh, education to some of the communities or in those areas where warfare is going on or, or struggles are going on. So it's very important for us to know about this and how to help them. So um, this is something which will help to identify if it is used. And the other one is uh, because it's so bad, um, the exposure can be the how much damage it is going to cause is going to be um, kind of directly proportional to how bad the chemical is and how long the exposure is. The major areas which you will have to remember from a nursing point of view is it is probably skin, eyes, and respiratory things that we are going to see more. There could be GI symptoms too, if they have actually taken it, ingested it with in liquid form or in food uh, items or something like that. But mostly these are the areas where you will see some of those signs and symptoms, which we will discuss. Um, it can also get exposed by touching or drinking water or eating food that contains sulfur mustard. And sometimes people may not feel any different initially, but later it might come up. Like it can be two hours later, or it can be even 24 hours later that people are going to feel the you know signs and symptoms. So immediately if someone is feeling okay, doesn't mean that they are not affected. So that's very important for us to know. And um, going into the signs and symptoms, the um, eye, ear, nose, throat area, you will see a lot of eye problems because it, it, eyes are exposed, so it can get into the eyes. So eye irritation, swelling, really bad ocular pain, eye pain, and it can even cause blindness. I mean, there could be a lot of different vision changes too, like people might have blurred vision, double vision, all those kind of problems may also affect, but it can um, it can go into blindness. Uh, they may experience hoarseness and like, you know, pharynx, larynx area, there could be, they may have problems there and runny nose and sneezing. So it might kind of uh, feel like an allergy, but it's not. And uh, pancytopenia, because it is going to affect the bone marrow and it can cause the cells to decrease. So cytopenia means your WBCs, your RBCs, your platelets may come down and that can cause bleeding and other issues. So even with the nose, they may have bleeding coming through your you know, cavities. It, if, if it is really bad and if the amount of exposure is really bad, then it can cause you know, nervous system problems, convulsions photophobia, like light sensitivity. So those kind of things can also show up. In respiratory system, it might start with that cough and it might go into a little bit of shortness of breath, then to full-blown dyspnea, then they might end up having respiratory failure. 
Okay, so these are the things we should be watching for because immediately the patients might appear to be you know, asymptomatic and, and doesn't mean that they are not a priority. So anytime you get a priority question, if something about sulfur mustard, think about that. They can go in this respiratory failure really fast. So we need to be really careful about those kind of prioritization in those patients. A GI, if they ingested it, abdominal pain, the nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and uh, one thing to remember, if someone is, you know, they told you that I think I have ingested sulfur mustard, never induce vomiting because when you induce vomiting, it might get even worse. That's a very important point for you to note down in your book. And skin, there may be blistering, burn. I mean, really like second degree burn, third degree burn. It might, it can really cause damage. And because they are really cytotoxic, they are really bad for the, for the cells. Um, yellowish color, maybe itching, there may be redness. So all those signs and symptoms you will see in these patients when they have this mustard, uh, sulfur mustard poisoning. And um, there are certain things uh, which are all the more important when it comes to what to do. And from a nursing intervention point of view, like taking action, prioritization, and, and making the solutions, like what to do next, which is part of the clinical judgment. These are the things you should be really, really, um, you know, completely thorough about. First of all, make sure to report to the local emergency notification system um, or hospitals or poison control center, wherever you have to notice, because this is not okay. This is a chemical warfare kind of thing. So you have to notify the appropriate authority. And um, if the sulfur mustard release is outdoors, like, you know, maybe in um, somewhere where people are outdoors, then make sure that people stay indoors as much as possible, close all the ventilations and the windows because you don't want the gas to come in. And that's one thing to do. But if let's say it is in a building, people are inside the building and that's where the sulfur mustard has been exposed or like released, then we have to go all the way out as far as possible. I mean, leave the area immediately and if it is possible, go to the highest ground because sulfur mustard gas in the gas form is heavier. So it will be kind of settling down into the lower area. So never go low, always go to the high ground. So that way you get at least some more fresh air or less concentration uh, from the sulfur mustard. All right, so go to the highest ground as much as possible. Get it off the body or dress or jewelry. If, we, if it is on you, then take off your clothes. Take much, as many layers as you can. Shower immediately. And when you're taking the clothes off, if you have, you know, a sulfur mustard like liquid on it, don't pull it over the face or the skin or, or the head because on your way, you might be like inhaling it. It might get into the mouth. It might get into the ears and on the eyes and the ears and it might get into the nose and that's not okay. So that's why we don't want you to pull on the clothes like that. Instead, tear it off or take it off without touching the skin and take a shower as soon as, soon as possible to get the things off. Now, the sulfur mustard in the oil form, it's kind of sticky, so it may not come off. And sometimes we have to use, you know, take it some separate um, you know, clean clothes or dry paper towels and, and we may have to blot it off, like take it off and make sure that it's not getting in contact with um, the skin when you're doing it. And when you're doing it, don't throw all the things on, um, you know, somewhere where other people might get in touch with it. So make sure that it is proper disposal. So, so very important not to spread it, right? So remove the clothes and shower and use separate dry clean clothes or paper towels if you have to blot, blot meanings like if you have to take it off from your clothes or something right and eyes very important to flush it and we all also already know about it right if something gets into the eyes what is the first thing we say flush it with lots of clean fresh water so that it just gets out of the and you know, out of that eyes or or otherwise there might be corneal uh, you know ulcerations and an injury and it, it, it may not go so it's very very important to do that so flush the eyes at least for 10-15 minutes with lukewarm water. No need to use any ice cold or warm water or anything. Just, just plain fresh water should be okay. Don't cover the eyes. Don't put any patches. Because if you put patches, eye patches or cover it, then it's going to stay. We need to let it escape. We need to let it go, right? Patients may start increased lacrimation. Like they may have a lot of watery eyes and itching. and But don't let them itch and spread it that much. You know, just flush it. That's the best thing. And if they are having contact lenses, remove them. 
right? And and trash them because they may be already um, kind of having that sulfur uh, mustard in them. And don't use any eye drops, right? Just just flush it, get it out. That's the best thing to do. Now, like I said, if ingested, um, they ingested or, you know, it, it's went inside by food or water or something like that. Do not induce vomiting because we don't want to create more uh, damage when it comes back up. So these points are very important for your NCLEX exam. So, and also for any nursing exams, if you're preparing for something, remember uh, these points and know what to do because this is going to give you a lot of information and pass those exams really fast. All right, so um, the other one I wanted to talk about a little bit more is the long-term effects. Um, and this, this will come under the teaching part too, because uh, sometimes patients may be exposed and they might they may not feel anything bad and they may feel they are okay, but it might come out later. So the long-term effects they may having, they may be having, you know, recurrent respiratory infections and they may even get cancers of the respiratory system. Uh, skin uh, cancer can another problem or skin scarring or pigment changes and permanent eye ulcerations and blindness and chronic eye infections can also occur. Now, like we said before, there is no antidote for that. Okay, we don't have any antidotes available yet. And we don't have the 100% information on how this is getting out of our body or how long it takes. We know that it gets excreted through the urine, but you know it, it, we don't have a lot of information available about it. It's still kind of in the research. So very, very important that we will be like 100% sure about what to do and how to identify and how we can help the patients when they come with it. So. Here we go, and I'm wishing you all the very best. All right, guys, keep there.